All right, so we are going to work on section one, two now. And this section covers uh, the different types of studies, whether we have an observational study or we have a designed experiment. So we're going to distinguish between the two. And then there are a few different types of observational studies that we will then look at as well. All right, so I'm going to read through some examples here um, and then explain what they are. All right, so example of cell phones and brain tumors. So researchers wanted to determine whether there is an association between mobile phones and brain tumors. To do so, 791,710 middle-aged women in the UK were followed over a period of seven years. During this time, there were 1,261 incidences of brain tumors. The researchers compared the women who never used a mobile phone to those who did use mobile phones and found no significant difference in the incidence rate of brain tumors between the two groups. And any study that we discuss here is a real study and you can actually look up the study. So they give you the information there. Okay, researchers from the United States a National Toxicology Program conducted a study to address the concern that radio frequency radiation or RFR may be associated with an increased likelihood of developing a brain tumor in humans. Rats were used to investigate this concern. The rats in group one served as the control and were not exposed to any RFR. The rats in group two were exposed to global system for mobile communications modulated RFR. And the rats in group three were exposed to code division multiple access modulated RFR. Um, so this was another study uh, that was done here. And a lot of this you may not understand. I don't even know what those terms mean, but um, still going here. Groups two and three rats were exposed to RFR using a continuous cycle of 10 minutes on and 10 minutes off for a total daily exposure time of about nine hours a day, seven days a week for approximately two years. Each chamber was maintained on a 12 hour light dark cycle with the same environmental conditions. All the rats had the same access to food and water. The researchers found low incidences of brain tumors in the rats exposed to the RFR, um, while the no cases of tumors in the control group. Um, however, the incidence rates was not statistically significant. Okay, so what does this all mean? Well, these were two different studies that were conducted in which the goal of the research was to determine if radio frequencies from cell phones can increase the risk of getting a brain tumor, okay? Whether or not the brain cancer was contracted is what's called the response variable and the cell phone usage is the explanatory variable. Um, in research, we use those two things, um, explanatory, uh, independent, there's lots of different words for a words for them, predictor variable, um, and the response, dependent, um, different words to describe the first value and then what happens as a result of that. Okay, um, so just to know the difference here. An observational study is going to measure the value without influencing anything, okay? There is no response. You're not going to influence the response or explanatory values, I should say. Um, all you're going to do is you're going to look, record, you can ask questions, but you're not going to do anything to change one group or the other versus where a designed experiment happens, you create different groups. So in this examples that we looked at, we had two different groups, <clears throat> women who used phones, women who didn't use phones, and we compared the results. Rats exposed to this type of RFR, rats exposed to a different type, and rats that weren't exposed to anything. Okay, that is a designed experiment. We are intentionally changing something in each of the groups to then determine if there is something different. Okay. So 
Is this an observational study or a designed experiment? All right, researchers wanted to determine the long-term health, health, oh my gosh, long-term benefits of the influenza vaccine on seniors aged 65 and older. The researchers looked at records of over 36,000 seniors for 10 years. The seniors were divided into two groups. Group one were the seniors who chose to get a flu vaccine, and group two were seniors who chose not. After observing the seniors for 10 years, it was determined that seniors who got flu shots are 27% less likely to be hospitalized for pneumonia and influenza, and 48% less likely to die from that pneumonia or influenza. All right, so observational experiment. And can we conclude that flu shots benefit all seniors? Well, <clears throat> So first thing, can I say that a flu shot is beneficial for every single senior? Would you recommend that every senior go out and gets a flu shot? Okay, no, we can't. Problem is here is we just looked at some observational data, we broke them into two groups. Um, and there's other things that could be happening here. Okay, there's flaws. We call that confounding and lurking variables. Okay, so let's look at what this means here. Confounding is when the effects of two or more explanatory variables are not separated. Okay, we didn't separate this very well. It was literally just seniors that got a flu shot, seniors that didn't. Okay, we didn't look at anything else. Um, there could be other things impacting the study, and those things are called lurking variables. So a lurking variable is some other variable that wasn't actually considered here, but could have impacted the response we got, okay? So here's a few of them, okay? Their age, okay? It makes a difference if you are 65, considered a senior citizen, and 95, okay? Your health status matters, okay? Are you a normally healthy individual? Do you have comorbidities? Okay, your mobility. Are you an active senior citizen or are you stuck in a um, nursing facility? Are you not able to get up and move? Do you move in a wheelchair? Okay, there are so many different things that impact this that were not explained here. Just basic, hey, here you got some, here you didn't. Well, these people maybe were less likely to get influenza. Okay, too many other things were involved here. So, I could not make the conclusion right away here. Oh, yep, every senior should go get a flu shot. Okay, way too many things going on here. <clears throat> okay, this was also an observational study. And it clearly said back here, they looked at records, okay, it was observational. They did not conduct an actual controlled experiment. So when you only do an observational study, we cannot make any specific claims about this thing must cause that, okay? Observational studies are strictly observational. There may be some relationships here, but that is all I can do. I cannot claim any specific relationship unless it is a designed experiment. Okay, so design experiments, just to remind you, will have specific groups that you are broken into and the groups will be controlled. There will be specific um, treatments or products given to the groups to make sure that the results are a true experiment. Okay, observational studies are just data that is collected um, and looked at. Okay, there is no manipulation of the people that you're working with. All right, so here are some examples that we have. Um, the first one is called a cross-sectional. And this is when you collect uh, data at a specific point in time or over a very, very short period of time, okay? So maybe I just um, ask my employees um, every day about their lunch habits. Okay, that's gonna be observational. I'm gonna ask them one time, 
short time period. Okay. Case control studies are also called retrospective. So what they're going to do is you're going to look back in time. Okay. So you're going to look back at previous um, health things that you've had happen versus a cohort study is going to take you into a group and they're going to then follow you into the future through the course of um, whatever it is they want to study. Okay, those are called prospective. So cross-sectional, one point in time, case controlled, is going to go back in time. Cohort is going to go um, into the future with you. A census, um, which we talked about in the last section, is going to get every single person in the population. Um, and just some history here, the first census was done in 1790 under Thomas Jefferson, and it is now um, that it must be conducted every 10 years. All right, so the results are then used to determine um, House of Representatives, how we fund different governmental programs, and all of that fun stuff. <laughs> All right, so let's see. We're also going to discuss here quick these last two things here, web scraping or data mining. Um, this is now something that we have because we have the internet and we can extract all sorts of data from the internet. So web scraping or also called data mining is now becoming an important part of the science industry. Data is so ready to be readily a value Oh my goodness, Aval available and valuable. Sorry, I put those two words together there. Um, the companies are going to search the internet for information all the time um, for their customers, um, associate or their competition. Um, but the biggest thing is permission things here. So just know that if you're um, search on the internet sometimes, um, you have to make sure you have permission to collect that data from there. Um, if you are actually doing research, um, all that permission has to be granted to you, otherwise you can't really use those results. Okay, so those are the different types of um, studies that we can do here. Again, observational is just looking at, um, observing the people asking questions. It can be at one point in time. It can be in history. It can be going forward. Um, an example of a, let's see here, an example of a case control study um, would be looking at people who were alive in World War II um, and asking them things about life back then. Okay, that would be retrospective. I'm asking people today about something that happened in their history, okay? A cohort study um, would be, let's see an example. Um, we could do, so today into the future, I wanna follow um, some women that are pregnant and I wanna follow the nine months of their pregnancy and I'm gonna ask them different things about their pregnancy symptoms. So I'm going to know what symptoms happen in the first month, second month, third month, fourth month, fifth month. And maybe I can make some observations of, hey, in the first month, this is really common. Or in the eighth month, this is really common. So I'm going to follow them into the future. Well, I hope that makes sense. Um, design experiments are with, um, a lot of times with drug trials where they break people into two groups. Um, or like you saw, if I want to break... Um, I'm going to do a different statement for each of the two. I could do it in educational settings. I could have two exactly the same um, statistics classes, but maybe in one class I teach you by hand, and in the other class I teach you with stat crunch, and I want to compare the results. Okay, I'm specifically doing something different in those two classes. That's going to be an experiment. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, and you will see me again on section one three.